Welcome to the Omar Show. I'm your host, Omar Guayo, and you are listening to 93.7, the country's number one radio station. Dennis has received an update from the stock market crash. Let's take a look. Thank you, Omar. Info on the stock market crash. Let's see. Investors had decided to cha- raid to trade millions of stocks with New York. Now, the result of trying to make fast money like that had its downers, meaning we lost billions of dollars. That's right, billions of dollars were right down the drain. The rich became poor. Now they get to see what it feels like to be poor like us. Alright, now, let's have a word from our sponsors. I have a stuffy nose. I don't feel good. Have you used Kleenex before? Wait, what's that? A Kleenex is a soft facial tissue that will soothe your irritated nose. Here, try one. Wow, it really does work. See? You can always count on Kleenex. Welcome back, everybody. Now, we will be hearing a news report by Jada Jerome on today's bank failures. Thanks, Omar. Well, things aren't looking too good for our banks. Hundreds of banks are closing left and right. The run on America's banks began immediately following the stock market crash. Overnight, Hundreds of thousands of customers have began to withdraw their deposits. With no money to lend and loans going bad and businesses and farmers taking a turn for the worst, the American bank crisis is deepening. People are panicking and lost trust in their banks, so they're withdrawing as much of their money as they can before they lose it all. Banks are starting to limit how much money people can withdraw from their accounts and have to liquidate loans just so they can stay in business. Our president, Franklin D. Roosevelt, has created a bank holiday from March 6th to March 10th, in which transactions are suspended across the nation except for making change. Even so, it seems like with all these bank failures, we're plunging headfirst into the depression. Back to you, Omar. Thank you, Jada, for your report on bankrupt failures. We will take a short break where we will transition to over farming. Stay tuned. Snap, what a happy sound. Snap is the happiest sound I've found. Midi. Oh, didn't see you guys there. Eating Rice Krispie cereal will certainly help improve the happiness of your life. So why not go pick some up now? Wow, those Rice Krispies are sure making me hungry. Thank you, Omar, for giving me the spotlight and allowing me to talk about overfarming. Overfarming is when natural vegetation is cleared and farmland is plowed, which can lead to topsoil being blown away by wind or washed by the rain. Now, farmers relied on overfarming to grow more crops, but unfortunately that did not help. So, they wanted to grow crops because of the Great Depression the United States was facing after the stock market crash of 1929. Since they wanted more money, they had to grow more crops, and they thought overfarming was the solution. So, the farmers plowed the soil too fine even though it was already rich before plowing. So, the farmers did not realize that crops were not growing, and there was barely any buffalo grass left, and because of this, the rate of wind erosion raised significantly since it usually occurs when soil is not covered by a protective layer of plants or decaying organic material. Winds came up at about 60 miles per hour at highest and just completely swept up all the topsoil and formed huge dust storms which were later known as the dust bowl 
which lasted about mid 1930s. This was all caused by unsustainable agricultural practices during the time of a drought and droughts and bad agricultural practices do not mix which caused all all the devastation I should say after the storms the soil conservation act was passed and this changed plowing techniques strip clapping and shelter belts to cut down on wind erosion all this helped everyone get back to their normal lives after the storm after investigation on over farming I really believe that all this could have been prevented if we all didn't have misinterpretation on agricultural practices um, Thank you, Omar, for having me in the show, and I pray to all of those who were affected by the Dust Bowl. Thank you. No problem, Luis. We will be right back after this outstanding deal Ford has to offer, so don't miss out. First, there was a Model T. Then came the Model A in 27. Now, there is a whole new automotive so original, so fascinating and luxurious that even the Chevy and Dodge enthusiasts can't bear to take a minute to appreciate this brand new beauty. Bye bye to the old 4 cylinder Model A engine and say hello to the first ever 3.6 liter V8 built to power every Ford car or truck. The Ford Model 48 is powered to rule the streets with its grill pushed forward and suspension lowered to provide a smooth and peaceful ride. Head over to your Ford dealer today and tell them James sent you. Ford, where our ideas fuel up your expedition. Well, what a wonderful car that is. Now, let's get back to our last but not least, guest, Tiana De Rosas, for her spiel on droughts. Why, thank you, Omar. Now, today in droughts, many crops were damaged by rainfall, high temperatures, and high winds. Insect infestations and dust storms followed. The unanchored soil turned into dust, which led to dark winds and skies, which now is called the Dust Bowl. There is no way to make money for farmers, especially in the Great Plains, due to the lack of agricultural growth. So far, the drought and erosion of the Dust Bowl has affected 10 million acres of land. With no rain, farmers couldn't grow any crops. No crops meant that the wind would blow bare soil high in the air, creating dust storms. School is canceled because of dust storms, not even snowstorms. Some farmers are in trouble because of the bad economy. We're forced to give up and move out of our plains looking for new work. But despite the depression, farmers borrowed and scraped together enough money to install new technologies, especially irrigation. Although we are all desperate for the rain, we must remain hopeful in these dry times. Thank you. What a superb report on the droughts, Yanni. We have learned about droughts over and over farming to the stock market crash and bank failures. And it is now time to conclude the Omar Show. Thank you, and we will see you next time on the Omar Show.